Hello, my friends. I wanted to jump on and tell you that enrollment is now open for our Unicorn Society group. For those of you who don't know what Unicorn Society is, it's our Business for Unicorns coaching group for training gym owners. Um, it's an amazing group of humans. I'm obsessed with these folks. So many people who have been in Unicorn Society have been in it for many years now. So that just tells you how much people enjoy being in the group. But briefly, what you get in the group is you get pretty much unlimited access to me and Mark and Pete Dupuy uh, as your coaches up to 90 minutes per month of one-on-one -on -one time with us plus kind of unlimited emails texts plus a ton of other things i could i could spend 10 minutes talking about it but we do retreats every quarter we have a, a two-day retreat that you can attend in person or remotely you get access to unicorn university all of our online courses we have a content library with endless tools and tips and scripts and templates um you also uh, have Zoom meetings with a group, our cohort from Unicorn Society that you talk to every other week or every week if you want to. And so the whole thing is that this group is meant to be your support system, your you know executive board of directors to help you both personally and professionally make decisions and navigate running a brick and mortar training gym. And so if that sounds fun for you, if you think you could use some extra support, some extra attention, uh, if you want to stop, if you want to stop feeling kind of alone. <laughs> running your business and want a little camaraderie, uh, a little friendship, uh, some peers to work with and collaborate with, that's what we do in Unicorn Society. That's what we do. It's the number one reason people join this group is because they want to have people to work with. It could be kind of lonely at the top. It's a cliche, but it's true. As a manager and leader of your organization, you often don't have people you can confide in and collaborate with. And so Unicorn, Unicorn Society provides uh, a, a bunch of thought partners Thought partners in the form of me, Mark, and Pete, and thought partners in the form of all the rest of your members who are available to you um, to serve as a sounding board and a support system. So uh, the reason I'm coming on to tell you is right now in the podcast is that early bird enrollment is open right now, and it ends um, September, November 7th. So if you enroll before November 7th, you get a lot of cool things. You save, I think, $1,800 on your dues for the year. So that's huge savings. We really mark down early bird pricing. You also get a free month. You to start early. So if you um, enroll by November 7th, you get to start in December, a whole month before the year begins. Everyone who rolls past the early bird um, uh, period won't start until January. So starting in December means you really get to hit the ground running. So anyway, go to our website, businessforunicorns.com, click the link below, um, and and come join us. There's an application process, of course, to make sure that we're the right fit for you and uh, you're the right fit for us. Um, but go apply. Even if you're curious about it, there's no commitment in the application process. So just go do it so we can have a conversation. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Email me, michael at businessforunicorns.com or mark at businessforunicorns.com. Um, thanks for letting me um, uh, share this information. I hope you all join me. It's a blast and we have a ton of fun together. So don't be shy. Let's do this. Bye. Hello, fitness business nerds. Welcome to another episode of Business Phoenix Corns Podcast. I'm here with Fisher today, and we're doing some talk about the business of fitness. <laughs> we are. It's what we do here. It's what we do. If you don't like it, this is the wrong podcast. Go away. <laughs> yeah. but we'll miss you. Seriously, go go listen to something else. But um, but thanks for being here, Fisher. We're excited to. I'm excited about this topic. We just decided we were talking about not too long yes. ago, and I love this topic. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about um, mentorship in our space, talk a little bit about peer coaching groups um, and a little bit of our experience on them. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Unicorn Society because I think uh, that's part of what we do. But we also want to just give you some 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 uh, kind of context for why we think groups like this are so useful and how they've been useful for us. And so this is not just a sales pitch, even though there will be one. We also wanted to actually give you, you know, real life experiences as to why Fisher and I have always been part of um, peer coaching groups and had mentors and things like that. And so I don't know, Fisher, where do you, where do you want to start this topic? Uh, I will just acknowledge, yes, we decided coming to this conversation, what we didn't want to do was to have this be a heavy handed, the, 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 the guru talks about how important mentorship has been to them and then demands you sign up for their thing. Now, admittedly, we do think the Unicorn Society might be valuable for many of you. What I will say briefly is we think some kind of situation where you are paying for coaching and getting in rooms around smart brains, either formal mentors and or peers that are in some cases further along your journey, 
think that is probably an arguably a good idea. Now, whether the unicorn site is a good fit or not, dear listener, is going to be up to you. You can decide. We won't be hurt. We'd love for you to consider unicorn society if you're a training gym owner. But ultimately, I think there are a number of things you need to consider. So what I would like to share to start is one of the things that is very top of mind when I'm looking to be part of a group is getting in rooms where people are further along than me and smarter than me <laughs> and have skill sets that I don't have. So while I certainly am open to formal mentorship and I have definitely hired coaches over the years, one of the things that I am looking for quite often is essentially to pay for proximity. I want to be in the room where people are going to expose me to different ideas, different strategies. I think there is an osmosis that's hard to put your finger on when you find yourself in a community of like-minded people. And it's interesting because many of these ways groups can be organized, and we'll talk about a few of them. The structures are often different, but one thing that is commonly true is oftentimes a lot of the most value you receive is from the relationships you develop with your peers in the group. And a lot of the places you get the best coaching and best ideas are often in informal connections, either in errant comments on a Facebook group or getting coffee if you're at an event together or out having a drink or dinner together. And that has certainly been my experience. So as an example of this, one group that I have been a part of for many years, which longtime listeners have heard me reference is the entrepreneurs group. Uh, the entrepreneurs organization. And specifically within that, there's a small group forum and there are nine people in my forum. This particular business, part of what we have liked about it, and depending on where you're at in your business, quite frankly, this might even be something you consider in lieu of the unicorn side, depending on what you're looking for, is all the business owners have to have at least a million dollars in yearly revenue. And in the small group forms, the way this one is structured, you're in non-competing industries. Now, there are some pros and cons to that. And I want to acknowledge there's some things about that that are challenging. And because I can't help but be very candid, one thing I would concede, and this is not a criticism of my EO experience, which has been amazing, is the reality is there's unique benefit you get from being with different businesses, but there's also, you don't get immediately actual toolkits because the businesses are so different that a lot of times the things that are going on are not directly applicable. Now, having said that, again, I get a lot of value around broad topics. If there is something for instance, like negotiating a lease, it can be very valuable to get people not in my industry to give some insight, particularly because we're all based in New York. But admittedly, that is, I think, a pro and a con of that type of organization, which is purely about the networking piece and not necessarily about any sort of actual formal educational curriculum or any sort of dedicated mentor figure that is giving you actionable information that you can apply to your business. Yeah, I think I think it's a great experience, Sharon. And, and for many listeners, you know, I was also a member of EO for many years, and I, I just want to echo: I got a lot of the same value there. That the idea of being in a cohort with other people who are in other industries really just opened my eyes of different ways of doing things. At least I've always felt like you know, in the, in the fitness space, there's a there's a lot of it's very incestuous. <laughs> There's a lot of recycling of ideas. There's only a handful of kind of thought leaders at any given time that most people are listening to. And so I like the idea of at least one of the channels of, you know, my inputs is through people who are in other industries. Cause I think there's just so much to learn from that. Even as Fisher, as you said, even though it's not immediately applicable, like they have a playbook that you can go run tomorrow, mm -hmm. it still provides so much kind of big picture thinking. Um, I think, you know, the way I think of this is there's really kind of three kinds of help I've reached, I've reached out for over the years, and they all provide different kinds of things. So, you know, you and I both, you know, hired coaches. And uh, those of you who know and have taken our coaching conversations course, I think great coaches help us do three things, help us clarify what we want, help us overcome obstacles and help us commit to action, right? And a coach is someone who's going to help you with that accountability, help you ask great questions, help make sure that you're taking steps in those directions, even when it's uncomfortable or when you're not sure. Um, and, and, I feel like I've done that repeatedly when there's specific things I know I'm stuck on and a coach can really help you get unstuck and start moving in that direction. So I think that's something for folks to consider is just, you know, finding a coach when you really feel like you're stuck and um, that's useful. I think the second piece of, of the, the thing I've always looked out for is like a peer, a peer group. And Fisher already mentioned a lot of these highlights, but I think the things I've gotten in a peer group, like the forum, and I've been part of um, others when I was in the nonprofit space, 
was was peer groups, as Mark said, you're, you're full. You're in a room full of people. You're playing for that kind of proximity to other people who are some some cases ten steps ahead of you, and I'll also say in some cases some ten steps behind you. And I think I found that that's been a real confidence mm. booster for me at times. To be like, oh look, look how far I've come. I didn't realize I I've learned about that already, and I've been through that already, and I overcame that already. And teaching it to others kind of reinforces my learning. So I think that's another kind of big piece of it. Not to mention that these peer groups are just really good for networking. Like I'm just you know. Both of us, I think, have met so many great people that have changed our lives in meaningful ways through these kind of peer groups. Um, and then I think the third piece, which you know we haven't talked about a ton, but it's really relevant to me right now because I'm in this relationship, but is, is mentorship. You know, and this is not exactly coaching, and it's not exactly a peer relationship. But mentorship is is someone who's who's walked the path you want to walk. And the relationship, as I see it, for mentorship, I'm doing this in school right now. Where I've been assigned a mentor who's who's been in the same work I want to do for, but like for 20, 30 years longer than me. <laughs> and this relationship is really cool because it's about just kind of picking their brain. Tell me what you did. Where did you take missteps? What did you learn? What would you do differently? Have had to do all over again. And that kind of mentorship is so valuable and it's different than coaching right because a, a good coach is, is doesn't have to be someone who's who's done what you want to do but a mentor is someone who has <laughs> uh, i think that's also just really useful and i've i've found that i've i've learned a lot from that even i've had only two interactions with my mentor so far in school and i've learned a ton already and so um i don't know those are the three categories i think about of this kind of like this kind of having a thought partner as an entrepreneur is really important and there's all different kinds of thought partners you can have based on what you need. So I don't know, that was a little bit of a ramble, but that's a little bit how I've thought about it for myself. Yeah, I think that distinction had not occurred to me, the, the value of being in a community where you can also provide feedback to other people, I think mm -hmm. can be, can be frankly, incredibly nourishing, <laughs> you know, particularly because we all are aware at all times of things that are not working well in our business. And one of the, and it's not something necessary that one ever thinks up as a benefit. I think when you sign up for these groups, it's like, I'm signing up because I will be emotionally satisfied when I can help other people that also have similar <laughs> challenges and issues. But it, it really is a thing. I think another piece of this for me that has been very important over the years is certainly something we do in the Unicorn Society. It's something we do with my EO forum. And I think as part of many of these groups, frankly, it's an excuse to go cool places and get out of the business sure. and work on your business in a place that's physically different. Yeah. So something I've been meditating a lot on recently is how much of our behavior of who we are is context dependent. And one of those contexts are not just your social context, but also your physical environment. So part of the benefit of most of these groups is going awesome places, or the very least a place that's not your usual beaten path. And I believe there are mechanisms in the brain, your lateral thinking, your ability to think creatively, to think clearly is facilitated by getting out of your business. And in fact, even in EOS, which is a system we run at MFF based off the book Traction, one of the tenets of their quarterly planning retreat is that it's not done in the business. You're, you, you do it somewhere else. You go to another space because at least in theory, that's going to help you think differently about the business. And I have found that to be very true, both as a participant in these events and as somebody that facilitates these events for the Unicorn Society. Yeah, I think that that's huge. I think it's it's really underappreciated aspect. If you want to have your thinking be creative, and and, and most creative creative thinking requires kind of non linear thinking. It's important to get out of your regular patterns, which means your regular spaces, right? And often, and it just changes the game, you know, for how differently you're able to think. So I think I think that's huge. I think another thing that seem, tends to be a commonality in peer coaching groups is that at least the ones I've been in, this is true for EO as well, um, was they tend to invite in outside speakers that the group leverages, you know, either it's, you know, it's shared, um, uh, you know, financial capacity or it's shared mm -hmm. efforts to like bring in guest speakers and bring in people to help facilitate other learnings and exercises. So it becomes a little bit of a, you know, a learning pod, right? Not only just learning from each other, but bringing in other people to help facilitate that as well. And I've always thought that was so valuable because I feel like, you know, one of the ways I like to bond with other people is learning together. I think if we learn together, we're going to be closer friends. <laughs> and in, when you can learn in a peer, peer group like this, learn together and get uncomfortable together, try new things together, it helps forge those connections and bonds. And also is, you know, you might learn things that you wouldn't have decided to learn if you were just deciding for yourself. Right. That the group decides, oh, let's let's get really, let's learn about this thing. Let's bring in this expert to teach us this. Um, and I, I, I love every minute of that. Yeah, no, one of the, the best 
uh, I say with all <laughs> no no negative feelings about ourselves, but I think probably one of the best things we've ever gotten feedback about is bringing in Zingerman's to do a standard operating procedures oh, workshop sure. for the members of the Unicorn Society. Yeah. So yeah, and you're right. That's the kind of thing that is very valuable. The feedback was incredible, but to your point, I'm I'm not certain how many of our members would have actually taken the time to yep. sign up for the course and either go to Ann Arbor or attend one of their virtual trainings. So yeah, that's a good point. Sort of enforced boundary. Uh, it's enforced horizon expanding. Yeah, yeah, it was true. I mean, even even my time at entrepreneurs organization, there was guest speakers on our forum. Often brought in outside people to come facilitate things, to do things with us. And many of them, you know, I don't know that I would have picked if it wasn't in the group and and you know nudged or inspired by my my, my forum mates to like, no, let's let's learn about this thing. It'll be useful for all of us. Um, so much growth happened that way. Yeah, so much growth happened that way. Yeah. Um, what else? Any any other, um, you know, if you had to think, Fisher, I'll, I'll put my podcast host hat back on. But if you had to think about the kind of a quintessential learning experience you had as a result of working with a peer group or a coach, you know, can you point to one that was like a real win that was really on the, you know, on the, on the back of that experience? Gosh, I... Putting on the spot, I know. Sorry. Yeah, this I mean, is... it's, it's hard to think of a particular... A particular thing that I learned as part of a coaching group that was highly tactical that I implemented in the business and it got X results. It's really been, and this is so cliche, I'm feeling nauseous as I say this, but it's nonetheless true. It really has been shifts in my personal standards, hmm. my personal mindsets of what I consider to be a bare minimum acceptable level of performance, <laughs> uh, what I aspire to and feel to be achievable. Because what happens is when you're in a peer group and there are people doing really amazing things that becomes suddenly because humans certainly I, I am very much the case and I think many people learn by modeling so if within this sort of chosen peer group I see individuals doing really amazing thing with their businesses and hitting really incredible personal and financial milestones it inspires me to both think bigger and in a way that I think one should be introspective about but can be positive and channeled thoughtfully become gently intolerant of how I've been performing so far. And I start feeling like I should be doing better. Look, at, I can be do better than this. And it's not to say that that can't be pushed too far because uh, it's a common topic of conversation this podcast. One, I think should be cognizant of the cancer version of capitalism and growth for its own sake. But that said, there's something to be said for continuing to strive higher and, and dream bigger. It doesn't necessarily need to be financial. And that has definitely been one of the biggest... I think changes in my mindset. And one thing I will share that is interesting, the entrepreneurs organization, you are sworn to secrecy. So unfortunately I can't even give you like, I, I'm not even gonna give you a kernel of what experiences we've had together. I was like, wow. So unfortunately I have to be incredibly foggy and smoky because I have taken a vow of secrecy because in particular in that particular organization, and I think this is true of many high quality coaching groups, you take a vow of extreme confidence because the things you can't say in life hold your power. And some of this kind of stuff can veer into almost the realm of men's work, actually. And having a space where you can say these things out loud that you are feeling very vulnerable, that you're maybe ashamed of, that things you're afraid of, there's something about pain shared is pain divided and creating a container with people that care about you that have nothing but your best interest at heart that allow you to explore very scary things and you know they're only going to be there to aggressively support you is a uniquely powerful experience that i wish for all humans because i don't know how people get through life without that frankly yeah yeah well said i mean i think we, we need spaces like this to be like psychologically safe spaces where we can talk about the things that we can't talk about other places and that really you know is a, is a fast track to personal and professional growth when you can really let out the demons and lay them out on the table with everyone <laughs> that you trust and sort through them right i mean that's so valuable yeah. yeah i mean you know just reflecting on my own answer to my own question was you know a very tangible one that first one of the first things that came to mind was i don't think this podcast would ex would have existed without without a peer group and a coach right because when we first started talking about doing this i was very hesitant to start this podcast and i talked about it a ton with forum mates from my EO group. And because it's a group of people who knew me very well, um, their reaction was like, what do you mean you're nervous about this? <laughs> like, what do you mean? You're, 
you you could do this tomorrow. Like, what are you what are you hesitant about? And they said it nice than nicer than this. But I mean, I was just really reinforcing that I went to them being like, I don't know this new idea. I didn't really put myself out there before this podcast as like my own person, <laughs> especially in and so um, and so. So that was really useful. And then I even, you know, who's she's been a guest on this podcast, Susan Blackwell, was another person I went mm -hmm. to several lunches with and had several phone calls with who had been, you know, a host of many, many things and was like, how do you do it? What does it take? Uh, and her kind of mentorship there was just so valuable. Um, she, she let me brainstorm and do just kind of just, you know, big blue ocean thinking. Um, and it really helped build my confidence to to do it. Um, and so I think that was one of the one of the direct outcomes I can point to that if it was, wasn't for kind of peer mentorship and an actual mentor and coach that I worked with, I don't know that I wouldn't have, would have taken this action. Yeah. It's what an interesting distinction. It occurs to me that another benefit of these kinds of groups is sometimes not just the accountability to take action, but the accountability to connect in a meaningful ongoing way. Which is to say that um, sometimes what people sign up for, and this can be part of it, and certainly the unicorn side is part of what we offer is a gentle ass kicking if you're not doing the things you say you're going to do. But for some individuals, and I would count myself among that number, I don't actually need a ton of accountability with taking action on the things that I want. Sometimes I need some thought partnering and that kind of stuff. But for the most part, if I've written it down, it's going to happen. However, part of what it occurs to me that I get a lot of value out of these types of arrangements is accountability to connect on a regular basis, because certainly I have many friends informally that are brilliant at what they do. And I always refer to them as my friend tours that in the course of our friendship, connecting on an ongoing basis, I will learn things. And sometimes they will be very tactical things I can apply to my business. But oftentimes those type of socializing, informal networking structures are just that they're informal. There's no accountability. There's no consistency. And I contrast that as something like the EO where we meet every month now. And this particular forum is in its 15th year. I've been in, I think for six or seven years where every month without fail, we meet. And I think that container can be powerful. Similar to ideally the unicorn society is you, you have these people that you slowly begin to deepen and enrich your friendships with, but you're on bi-weekly calls with your small group. And then you have the big retreat that we do every three months. And then you are active with each other in the Facebook group. Now, certainly, I think this is if you're using the group well, right? Which is not to say that people can't sign up for any coaching groups. That's, I think, maybe another takeaway is if you sign up for a group and you really don't have the wherewithal or the time to actually give it some energy, of course, definitely you're not going to get a lot out of it. But if you're willing to go into this group, kind of echoing your earlier point, Keeler, with partly an intention to serve, but also at the very least an intention to meaningfully show up for that community, I think that can be powerful. And the constraint, frankly, of first of all, you're paying money and mm -hmm. usually these groups are not cheap, but yeah. also there are assigned scheduled events, either virtually or in person, where you will have the accountability to go and meet with them. I think that adds a layer of, structure and cadence that doesn't happen even in otherwise very fulfilling social personal relationships that have uh, maybe an implicit mentorship relationship or peer networking coaching relationship. Yeah. I think there's some something interesting about the dance between transactional relationships and transformational relationships, right? Because in part, I think have paying for a coach or a mentor or a group like EO is transactional, right? It, it's like I'm putting money on the line to pay for your time and energy and expertise and time is probably the most important one. Um, I think that adds a layer of useful pressure when the the experience is transformational, when the rest of what you actually experience is actually you know moving you in all the ways one can be moved. <laughs> um, and so I don't know, there's something interesting about that. I don't know, maybe it's a blog post or something someday, but um, but I think there's something valuable there. It's really true. And it, it's something of late I have come around to, frankly, very reluctantly, honestly, because it was one of those things, it feels such like a salesy marketing thing to say like, oh, I'm charging you a billion dollars. So you actually have skin in the game. But the reality is it's true, unfortunately. And I kind of don't want it to be true. I want it to be like, oh, well, just give people <laughs> the tools and they'll run with it. Um, though, even though it is, I think, a good point, uh, a good point of persuasion. In fact, it is true that if you pay 10 grand, 25 grand, 50 grand a year to be yeah. part of a group, it's going to be unlikely that you're going to pay that money and then 
take your foot off the wheel, and not engage. Yeah. Not saying it and, never happens, but <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, and the, the, it's also true for the people, even like ourselves, the, the coaches and the mentors and the people who facilitate these groups, right? Paying them means they're going to make sure there's consistency. They're sure. going to make sure that there's like actual planned engagement. There's going to make sure that the speakers sh are there in high quality and show up on time. And there's something about that transaction that kind of is useful to there being consistent transformation. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, we can geek out more about that, but um, let's maybe just talk a little about unicorn sites. So we promised we would, we warned you that we would, but really all the we'll things be we've been, yeah, we'll be brief, but all the things we've been talking about are kind of why we started unicorn society. Right. I mean, it was because we were like, hey, can we create a group like this that we get all the benefits that we've gotten from these interactions in a group that that we would lead? That's about owning a brick and mortar training studio and the experience of being being an entrepreneur in this space. Um, and now I don't know, when did we start Unicorn Society? 2016? No, it was 20, 20. It might have been 2018, actually. Wait, wait um, the years are all blending together now. I, need I think a, it was I need 2018, dare I say, maybe 2017, but. Got it. We I started it doing business of unicorns things in 16, and then this didn't yeah. happen to 20. That, that's correct. Um, and so, you know, now we've been doing this for a few years, and I can say it's one of the most fun things we've done in the last few years. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's just been a real blast personally. And I feel like I feel really proud of the fact that many people who started with the group back in 2018 are still with the group. Still with us, yeah. And in the and many of them talk about when they talk about the value, they talk about a lot of things that Mark and I have echoed on this podcast today, which which you know really lights me up. The fact that they have really gotten a lot of transformation, a lot of learning, a lot of connection, a lot of a safe space to talk about their shit. <laughs> and so, you know, I say all that to say I'm really proud of the work we've done and we continue to hopefully improve it year after year. So I don't know, Fisher, you want to talk a little bit about kind of features and benefits of what the heck it is briefly? Yeah, just as a high level overview and you can go to businessofunicorns.com slash unicorn dash society. And I'm sure this will be in the show notes too, if you want to read it. But I think the core offerings are up to 90 minutes of coaching with myself or Keeler or Pete Dupuy. You can work with one of us consistently, or you can work with uh, all, all of us. us based on a given month. So it's up to 90 minutes per month of coaching. We will also coach your team. So if you have a business partner, if you would because you're never to profit your own land. If you want us to deliver a message to your employee, we can come in as intimidating industry figures and be direct with them. And additionally, there is bi-weekly group coaching calls. So every other week you meet in a small group to get on-demand coaching, crowdsourcing, where you can bring wins and issues you want the council to solve. And then of course the retreats, which we've mentioned, which we do every three months in very cool places. The next one coming up is Nashville, which is super exciting. And now the world is officially coming back ever so slowly. So we've got really big plans for next year. We won't be announcing just yet, but we're gonna be going all sorts of awesome places. And at those retreats, the, as Kater mentioned, we've constantly been toying with this based on feedback. Right now, one thing we have, have found to be very successful over this past year is essentially taking at least one of the two days as a quarterly planning retreat. So you get very clear on what are the most important goals for your business? What are the weekly KPIs you're tracking? What are you going to focus on to move your business in the direction you want over the next three months? Additionally, there's an additional day of additional content. And historically, this has been guest speakers. We will likely continue to have that. And going forward, we're also going to be focusing on a specific subject. So for instance, in Nashville, the first day will be focused broadly on sales. In addition, of course, to the work, I can't emphasize enough, so much of the value of the retreat is just hanging out. Because frankly, for many of you, it essentially serves as an excuse for a paid vacation because you're putting it, now you're the one paying for it, dear listener, but you're putting it on the business so that it all is a tax write offable expense. We get really great bulk deals. So we tend to make the housing very affordable. Of course, we pay for lots of events. We pay usually for some food and some drinks. So it winds up being a very affordable way to make your way to really awesome places and hang out and just have a cool experience away from your business, which many of you, I love you so much, is something I know you're reticent to do without a very strong, compelling reason. So those, I think, are the main features. I would also say briefly, you get exclusive access to the Unicorn University which is our learning curriculum, which is where we host all of the courses we've done over the past several years for Business of Unicorns on topics like time management, coaching conversations, building a team, et cetera. And then you get access to the Facebook group, which is just one more place to connect with people and get on-demand coaching. 
Yeah. Well said, my friend. I think those you, are the things. Yeah, you 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 covered it. I think you know the thing that um, I, I continue to be impressed with is that as the Unicorn Society has lasted all these years, um, I see we see more and more people that are five steps ahead of the, the other people or five steps below and are really serving as kind of peer mentors in this group mm -hmm. in a way that I think is really fantastic. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, no matter where you think you are in your business, dear listener, <laughs> there's a place for you in, in, in this group. If you own a brick and mortar training gym and you feel like you could use some of the support and guidance and thought partnership that Mark and I talked about today, just come talk to us about it. There's really no harm in applying. The link to apply will be down below. We do have um, a little bit of a time sensitive offer and that we have an um, early bird rate that saves you, I think, $1,800 on your dues for the first year. Mm -hmm. And that expires on, what's the date, Fisher? The Soon. <laughs> Soon. I want to say, yeah, I want to say it's with, within just a, a probably a, a week or two of this podcast being released. And yes. The date will be down below in the show notes. But, you know, but, you know, apply now. There's no harm in starting the application process. It just means you'll get on the phone with me or Fisher or Pete and just talk about your business. And if we are a fit, great. And if we're not a fit, we'll help you find maybe something that is a fit. There's lots of other groups out there. We're yeah. not afraid to point you in the direction of one that might be a better fit for you. And um, as Fisher said earlier, that these kind of groups are only going to be as valuable as the amount of time and effort you're willing to put in. And if you're not the right fit for us because you just don't have the amount of time and effort to dedicate, we'll let you know. And totally there's plenty cool. of others that are have a lighter touch yeah. that might be a better fit to start. But um, but I think that's I think that's all we need to say about that. Anything else you yeah. wanted to cover? No, I would just echo. Yeah, we completely encourage you. You should check out the options these days. There are lots of these groups. Yeah, many of them are very very good. And as it happens, luckily for you, if you're considering your good side, we're very transparent. It's not the move where you have to get on a call and then we try to sell you into the thing. All the details, all the pricings, all the stuff is on the landing page so you can decide. And yeah, feel free to shop around. You should go check out other ones. We feel very confident that the value for what we charge is pretty over the top, particularly because of how personally invested Michael and, and Pete and I are in you getting these this success. This is not a situation where you get a once a month, ask us anything, <laughs> video. you know, like yeah. we are up in your grill and you know, maybe you don't like that. Maybe it's not going to be a good fit for that reason. So <laughs> yeah, I would love to have you check it out. And for what it's worth, it's interesting. I think I'll give you one final thing that I would suggest as you consider these cozy groups, hopefully we've sold you whether it's with us or not, that this is a thing that I think everybody should be doing if they want to keep up leveling. I think there's value in going into mixed industries. I think for a typical training gym owner, I would encourage you to wait until you've got pretty maxed out for your area, which is probably in the 500K to $1 million mark. And, and one thing that I am going to be continuing to apply, which I recommend you applying, is there might even be value, and this might not make sense for you at financially or time-wise, having one group that you're in that is mixed industry and one that you're in that is based on your industry. So in full disclosure, I'm looking at a couple of opportunities to join another group in addition to EO. And I will likely be looking for things that will allow me to get around people in the fitness industry that are maybe not training gym owners, but there is a big old world out there that training gym owners are not always exposed to, a uh, very large fitness business of people that are doing amazing things, the people that have been in the industry for decades, and I know I have so much to learn from. So it's part of why I recently signed up for URSA, which you probably know is the biggest trade organization for our industry, is... I am committed to finding more opportunities to, again, just get around people that are doing better stuff than me that I can learn from and that have things I can take to apply to both Mark Fisher Venice and our clients at Business for Unicorns. Yeah. Well said, my friend. I, yeah, I co-signed that idea. I think having an organization that you're close to that is in your industry is useful. And then one that's not in your industry, also useful for different reasons. So I think that's a great strategy. Awesome. Well, um, thanks for the great chat today, my friend. Listeners, I hope you got a lot out of this. Even if Unicorn Society is not the right fit for you, I hope you will consider finding some coaching, some mentorship, a peer group out there that can support you and your goals. So uh, thanks for the great chat, my friend. We'll do it again soon. Hey friends, before you go, just one more thing. Um, if you enjoy this podcast, you get value out of it, you enjoy listening, please share this podcast, comment below. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. Um, please share it with friends and family. We don't spend any money on marketing or advertising. And so um, so the only way people find out on this podcast is from you. So please do everything you can to share it with friends and uh, fellow colleagues in the fitness industry. Uh, we love making it and we want to keep doing it for a long, long time. So I appreciate your support. Go have a kick-ass day. Bye.